Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at how to fix the stuttering and issues with micro stutter in games and applications on your Windows 10 PC. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in this video we're going to look at how to uh, try and fix the problems that we get with things like PUBG and other games with micro stutter or lagging and also issues in some programs such as Adobe Premiere and things like that. And mostly it's down to Windows not looking after the RAM properly and caching far too much of your system. This then involves the cache moving the files around which causes micro stutter. So let's go straight to the PC and I'll show you how to go about trying to fix this problem. Okay, so the first thing to do is to open up a web browser and in Google you can just type in WJ32 or go to WJ32.org. Now WJ is the author of this uh, little software program or EXE we're going to be using and we want to be looking for in software the empty standby list. So we click on that and we can download the file and save it to the desktop. It's only a tiny little file so that shouldn't take very long at all. So what we want to do now is we want to put that executable file somewhere within the system32 or program files folders. You can choose pretty much whichever one you want. Uh, I think I'll go with program files. So if we start a new folder and we'll call it empty. And then what we need to do is to grab the exe and stick it in that folder. Once the file is copied across, right click and choose properties and then in compatibility we want to run it as administrator if it isn't already so it's already got run as administrator so we're all good if yours doesn't say it then just uh, put a tick box there and click apply so if yours looks like that put a tick box click apply and hit ok so that's the uh, the program side of it done so what we need to do now is open up task manager and go to performance and then memory and as you can see here's our cache memory just on this side so 1.2 gigabytes at the moment which uh, is actually quite a lot and Windows generally won't release it unless you either close a program or whatever and it will just keep on building and building until it gets to some incredible size so what we want to do is to create a new schedule in the task scheduler so type in task and scheduler or start typing it and you should get the app come up and what we want to do now is to create a new task. So we're going to call this task empty. So put that in the name and the description. And you want to change the user group because you want it to run as a system task. So in the uh, users or groups, click on advanced and then find now to get a list of all the uh, users and groups. And scroll down to find the system group or system user. Double click on it or click add and then click OK. Make sure it just says system there. And also make sure you run this with the highest privileges and you can change the configure for to Windows 10. Obviously if you're running Windows 7 uh, or Server 2008, choose that. If you're running Vista or Windows Server 2000, click on that one there. Choose your operating system version. So all we do now is go to triggers and create a new trigger and we want to begin the task on a schedule, leave it at one time, uh, but then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the task every five minutes. You can choose longer if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Uh, five minutes for me works absolutely fine, uh, I would recommend. That is essentially pretty much the length of a round in kind of most online games, so um, basically it's going to remove your cached file or cached memory after every round, which should uh, keep the cached file under control. So the duration of that we want to be indefinitely because we want this to run all the time, every five minutes regardless. And make sure that you've got a tick box there that says it's enabled. Click OK. And now we can go into actions. So what we need to do is we've created our trigger. Now we need to know what's going to happen or choose what is going to happen when their trigger is done. So click on new and we want to start a program. And we want to browse now to the program. So depending where you put your folder, so mine was in program files and then empty 
and there's our file empty standby list.exe so choose that then click open then click OK and in conditions uh, pretty much you can leave this as it is I think that's pretty much OK and in settings uh, your settings might look slightly differently I've got the option here to allow tasks to be run on demand uh, that may or may not be ticked I'm going to leave it ticked just so I can show you the actual program working without having to wait for five minutes so click OK and that's it so if we go into our task scheduler library we can see there I'll just make this screen a little bigger this is a li library of all the triggers that are happening on your system so if we highlight empty and what we can do now is actually just click on run and if you look at the cached memory size there click over on run and we should see that drop pretty dramatically well hopefully and there we go so that's what's going to happen that is realistically all the RAM that we need to be having cached at the moment, 325 megabytes, which is a massive drop down from the 1.2 gigabytes that we were using. And as you can see, it's slowly creeping up, and that will happen all the time. It'll, Windows will slowly creep up and down, but generally it doesn't release the cache very often. It doesn't flush the cache, so it's a good idea to do this, just so that Windows doesn't have to juggle all that cached information around from your RAM through to your system and basically cause those little bottlenecks, micro stutters and lags that we experience in games and apps. So that's pretty much the uh, the job done. If for any reason yours doesn't um, empty the cache every five minutes, you may find you have to do a restart of your computer to allow the task to kind of bed in or to uh, trigger itself. But that should be pretty much it. Okay, so there we go. There's a nice simple way of reducing your Windows cache memory size and to actually help your system perform as it should do. This is something that Microsoft should have fixed a long time ago. It should have been added in, but they haven't done. But thanks for uh, WJ32 for making this EXE file. And what I will do is I'll put links to this both in the video description so you can check out for yourself. Also, I'll be putting links in the Discord server. So if you're getting any problems with setting this up or you've got any comments or questions, feel free to comment over here in the section below or join us on the Discord server and we'll uh, try and go through any problems or uh, issues you may face. So there we go, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews in How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.